I have spent tens of thousands of dollars to learn the stuff I'm gonna teach you today. This stuff today is what your attorneys, your accountants, whoever, is gonna charge you a lot of money to talk about. So today we're gonna to talk about organizing your life in terms of your finances. And you have an LLC. How do you make money in that? How do you manage the bank accounts? How do you grow this? Protect yourself from liability, maybe lawsuits if you're in an industry that's prone to that. All that sort of stuff, that's what we're gonna talk about in today's video. As always guys, if you can, click that like like button watch all the way through because by the end of this guys you're gonna know more than 99% of people I promise you guys are gonna love this you should be paying for it you're gonna love this thing so with that said now that you've learned about goals now that you have learned about budgeting investing stability you got to organize everything you have to we know about our budgets we know about investing we know about stability how do we organize this thing organization is preparation if you fail to plan you plan to fail in this case, my organization is simply my plan. It's not a business plan, it is my plan in finances. So what I wanna to do today is I wanna start talking to you guys about organizing every legal entity you have, all the LLCs that you have. Some of you guys have none, some of you have one, some of you have multiple. Whether you're at zero, one, or multiple, this will be pertinent to you and what I do. And again, I've spent tens of thousands of dollars with this information to learn this information I'm giving to you guys absolutely free. So the first thing I want to talk about is my binders. This binder strategy, I got to tell you is so old school, but it works so well. So with that said, these are the binders that I use and every binder, and I've got more than just these three, but every binder literally is just a binder with a piece of paper and I put the LLC name on the front. I just print it. And you can go look up these LLCs, I don't care. I, I blur it for personal information, but it doesn't really matter. You, if you guys find them, great. But part of this is you're not gonna find some of these. You're not, it, it won't happen. I'm gonna teach you how to do that. And that privacy should be a goal of yours because what if you have one of these LLCs owning a rental property and the owner sues you because they find your name on the LLC that owns a rental property. Let's talk about that in today's video. So first of all, these binders, I want you to think about you start an LLC by the way, you can pay a thousand bucks at LegalZoom if you want to do this, or you can just learn from me for free and do the same thing they're going to do for you. So check this out. In each binder, I have specific information where I could walk into a bank, I could walk into a lawyer, accountant, whoever it is. When I walk in and I give them this binder, everything they need is in the binder, so you don't have to worry about it. If you do it once, you're done. I got these binders sitting in my office every single day, so check it out. Inside of each binder is, number one, the articles of organization. This is the articles that says that your LLC is active. It exists. It is the name of your LLC. It's got pertinent information such as the principal address. It's got pertinent information showing where you're at, where you're located, that sort of stuff. But that's all it is. It's your name, articles of organization. Every LLC has one. And if you have them in your LLC, go get them. The second piece of paper that you're gonna need, EIN number. So what is this EIN number? The CIN number is basically the social security number for your business. It allows you to track your income, your expenses, and your taxes so that the IRS can track what you're doing, what you're making, all that sort of stuff. So your, your, your EIN number is the second page. When I open the binder, first page articles, second page EIN. Third is the engagement letter with my attorney. Now, this might be interesting, but every attorney I work with makes me sign an engagement letter. That's basically me saying, hey, this is the service you're doing for me. This is what I plan to pay you. But it also, my attorneys add instructions in it. Now this might be a little bit more advanced, but I'll explain why. I own multiple companies. In a little while, you'll see I own companies that own company. Uh, technically, Patrick Kenny owns one company. I'll get to that in a little bit. But the way I have to sign for each company on contracts, agreements, is actually different. So imagine I get an agreement with company XYZ. It is a specific way I must sign to remain legal. So I go to my binder, I open it up, and I go to the instructions, and it will literally say, sign like this. And it will show me how I want to sign it, what I need to say. Some of them is Patrick Kenny member of, some of them is Patrick Kenny manager of. There's different words because of the incorporation. That is number three. Number four is the operating agreement. Whether you're just alone in an LLC, you alone, no partners, or whether you have partners, you need an operating agreement. Let me tell you guys, if you have partners, make sure you spend money on operating agreements because that's like the prenuptial agreement of this marriage, which is business. And you want to make sure if anything goes awry, that you have a good agreement that allows everybody fair game at the end. Now, 
Last but not least, bank account info. So, first of all, one, two, three, and four are what are in every binder. And then if you wanna go get a bank account, you walk in the bank and you get your bank account. Everything in this binder, you're golden. You're golden. You can give it to the banker. They're gonna open and go, wow, thank you for being so organized. They're gonna love it. They're gonna think that you have done this a hundred times and it might be your first time. And then they're gonna give you your bank account information. And what I do is I like to print it out and I like to put it in the binder. I like to see the bank account information. And if they don't make a fancy printout, go get it. Meaning account numbers, routing numbers, et cetera. And as you guys can tell, this is a lot of pretty precious information. And so I like to keep these things safe in a safe safety deposit box, something, keep them away from just the public eye, of course, somewhere safe in your house, somewhere in a safe, something like that. And you're good. So now that I have all of these, the question is, what do I do with those bank accounts? So I walk in, I need to make a bank account. Now this, I got to tell you, if, if, I, if you haven't learned anything, right here, the stuff 17, 18 year old Patrick wish he knew. I made the exact, I'm teaching from mistakes here. So if you can avoid the mistakes I'm about to show you. And what's funny is, some of you are going to watch this and you're going to be smirking on the, on, on the other side of this screen and you're going to say, that's me. He's literally talking about me. I've made these same mistakes. What I'm saying is going into the new year, you can make a decision. When I found this information, I made a decision. I'm going to change everything because I want to protect myself. So check this out. Here is how I, in my opinion, would set up your business bank account structures. It starts with your first bank account. That's that circle. Now your first bank account is what we call an operation account. You all have one if you have a business bank account. You know when you go in to start a bank account and they create that bank account for you and you have that checking and it's XYZ LLC checking? That is your operation account. What that means is all the money from sales and revenue, it goes in that account, right? And that account is when you log in right now to your bank, if you have an LLC, that's that checking account in your LLC. You probably only have one. That's your operation account. After that, I want you to create a second business bank account. Now this second account is a tax account. Why? As you guys know, when you get paid, you could be a 1099 contractor, you could own your own deal, either way you have an LLC. When you get paid, is taxes taken out? No. And so if $10,000, let's say here, we'll just say $10,000 comes in, what I like to do, and this is bare bones minimum, is I like to put 30% into my tax account. So in that case, that would mean $3,000 is sitting in this tax account in this example. Why is this important? Because at the end of the year, when the accountant calls and says you owe 10 grand and you don't have 10 grand, how worried are you gonna be? Now the IRS is on your ass. And you're talking about, oh, I don't wanna do that? Again, just a suggestion, starting to put something away. 30%, by the way, is an arbitrary number. Oftentimes, I find myself doing higher than that. But this is going to be a number that's going to keep you in the ballpark of what you owe. Then you're going to write off some things, and we'll talk about that in another masterclass that should bring that down. Now, here's the kicker and the ticket here. This should be a savings account, guys. This should not be a checking. You're saving here. And with saving, I would be in a high-yield saving. So go find a bank that has a higher yield savings account. You know, a lot of these online banks have them. Ally Bank comes to mind where you can make 4%, 3%, 5%, whatever their percentage is. It always depends on the federal funds rate, but at least it's accruing some interest. Now you're going to pay taxes on that interest, but that's fine. You get a 1099-INT at the end of the year. It's an interest form. And every year I get it. And I'm paying taxes on the gain that I had, but my money that I was saving to pay taxes is making me money. And so that's where another big key tip here is one of the smartest things you can do is hold on to this for as long as possible. So if your accountant comes to you and says, do you want to pay your taxes now and it's January 15th, or do you want to wait till April 15th? Well, if you wait, you're accruing interest. The IRS isn't paying you interest. So if you wait, you're accruing that interest. That's just another little key tip. So, you know, April, of course, tax time is when you're going to be paying this amount. Now, next, after your tax account, out of your operation account, 
connected is a personal account. Now, by connected, I don't mean literally the operation account owns the personal account. You need to have a personal bank account. And why is because you need to not make the mistake Patrick Kenny made for years. You know what Patrick Kenny did? In the, came the money to my LLC, and my rent was paid through it. Any sort of loan was paid through it. Cell phone bills were paid through it. Personal uh, dinners were paid through it. I was my LLC. So if I got sued with that LLC, they would come in and say, wait a minute, you are your LLC. So we might as well sue both of you. That's called the corporate veil being pierced. And so what you want to do is you want to think about this yellow. I'm going to use this a lot here in the next coming slides. This yellow is a shield. Protection. It protects you from this. The reason you have an LLC, why is it an LLC? It's limited liability. That's the first two L's. You're trying to limit your liability and risks. And so in this case, if everything in your personal life is being spent out of your operations account, you are your LLC. Screw it, my friend. If you ever got sued, you're done. But if you literally, guys, and I like to keep it simple, if you literally just go onto your banking app, like I have Chase, and it's all under one app, and you just transfer money from here to here, you're in a different bank account now. This account you're using to spend money. So here's how this looks. Let's say 10,000 comes in, 3,000 to savings. What do I have left? $7,000. I wanna pay myself five grand a month. That's my salary per se. I can now do just that. I can send 5,000 and in this case, now I've got 5,000 in my personal. By the way, in this case, I'm not a tax attorney. You can go talk to your tax accountant about an S corporation. This is where this can start to come into play. But this transaction is a write-off for your business. You personally will pay the tax on that. You're going to pay personal tax, not your business paying the tax. The business will write this off in that transaction. Now check this out. Now that I have 5,000 in my personal account, that is when car, rent, I hope you get the drill, insurance, my personal expenses, all of my business expenses, marketing, software, whatever, you're, you, whatever you need to pay for your business meals comes out of this. So you have one, in this case, bank account, probably with a debit or credit card here. So you're swiping this card for these expenses and you're swiping this card for these expenses. Guys, are you getting value out of this? Now check this out. After this, what I have is one more. What do you think it is? It's my savings. It's my investing account. So what I do is I take a percentage of whatever I made. This is say 5,000 bucks I made. I take a percentage, we'll say 10%, and I put it into this account a high yield account just like the other tax account. And what do I do? I save it. Now keep in mind that if you set yourself up in this way, you're getting taxed here because you're writing it off here on that 5,000. So keep in mind that in, if you do it this way, there would also be one more that you can add here out of your personal, which is a second tax account for 30%. So now you've taken 1,500 here, You've taken 500 here. You've effectively wiped out $2,000 and you've got 3,000 to do what you want with. That's your money. Now, some of you are saying, man, I'm starting to get it. I'm starting to see it. I made 10 grand. I've only got three now. And yes, that's the reality of business. People think business is glamorous. It's not. And if you do this wrong, you can screw yourself. But this here, when I'm saying give it, move it, it's as simple as transferring money between accounts. It's as simple as writing yourself a check. This could be writing a check to check. This could be transferring. I like to keep everything in, in one account and then I only keep this account, this account, and this account, those three in high yield environments. I keep my operations and my personal account in Chase Bank. That's my preference. I just keep it all together, transfer it, and then when I need to put the money for investment, for saving, for tax, I go to a high yield account that's accruing me interest. But this shield is so important, guys, and I want you guys to keep this in mind. 
as we go into these next slides because it's about to get crazy. So now we're going to talk about, that was for one LLC. So now think about that. You're like, man, I got like five LLCs. And if you do it wrong, you screw yourself. Not that anything will happen. I'm telling you, I did it wrong for years. Nothing, no, nothing came about, partially because I wasn't like renting to people. I wasn't doing any sort of like outbound marketing. Like I wasn't exposing myself to any sort of risk, real risk. But what I can tell you guys is you might be in a business that has risk, construction, rentals, um, outbound marketing, different things that could expose you to lawsuits. So let's check this out. I only own, this is a true statement, I only own one company. I only own one company. Yet, I just showed you three binders. So you say, wait a minute, how do you own one company yet you have, you've already shown us multiple? Well, it's because I own a holding company. It's located in Delaware and my holding company owns my endeavors. It owns my LLCs. So why do I use Delaware? Now, some of the reasons aren't really pertinent to me but some of the reasons are gonna be pertinent to you. I own in Delaware because they have a different legal system that is not using jurors. They use what's called chancellors. They have people that have been around business making the decision on who wins a lawsuit. Not a bunch of random jury members that never owned a business in their life. Now again, I've never been through this. I've never had to go to a, a trial. I've never been in that. But I'm saying that is one reason. Number two, flexibility. We were able to tailor my corporation how I wanted it to be a great holding company for me. It's very customizable in multiple different ways. Number three, the big one in green, the reason, it's privacy. Privacy, it's because it's confidential. I could give you the name of my holding company. You're not going to go find it. You're not going to find it. And you're going to have to pay an attorney if they find it. It's going to cost you thousands of dollars in attorney fees just to find who owns it. And so I'm going to get to that in a little bit as to why that's important. But that's the biggest reason for me. Also tax. They're very tax friendly. I don't pay any sales tax and I do not have any tax on out of state income. I don't live in Delaware. You've probably heard of a lot of corporations owning companies in Delaware. Nike, they don't work out of Delaware. But why do they do it? This is one of the reasons too. There's no, no out of tax income for out of state income. All of my income is made out of state. I don't have to go pay them. I'm not saying I don't have any tax guys. I still have Arizona tax, still have federal tax. I don't have to go back to Delaware and give them their cake too. They get paid because of my fees every year, which isn't a lot of money, a few hundred bucks, but that's how they get paid. And they get paid on thousands of these, actually more than that. Last but not least, it's easy. Set up, when I did this, shoot, it was done quick. Within a week, less than that if you're expediting the process. It's very quick, very easy. And my entire corporate structure I'm about to show you, I spent way too much money to get done. And with the right attorneys, you can get this stuff done for under two grand nowadays. But I'm telling you, I spent a lot of money to learn all this and I'm about to show you what the structure looks like. So I'm gonna show you how rookies do it. Now I gotta say, I was a rookie. So this is Patrick Kenny years ago. I was a rookie for many years. This is how a rookie does it. How many of you guys know people that have multiple business endeavors? I wonder if they have multiple LLCs. So what does that mean? You have a gift basket company and you sell gift baskets and that income goes into that LLC. You also are a real estate agent and commissions go into that LLC. But finally you did well and you bought a rental property and it owns that LLC. Everything you do is just one LLC. Now why is that bad? Well, rookies do it, and this is the shield. You do not want a shield that encapsulates you in a bad way where you can't escape. If this lady that rents the property from you falls because you didn't fix the sidewalk and sues you, you've just exposed the entire business. Now, if you're doing this right, you didn't expose yourself. If you're separating your business and personal accounts, we just talked about that, right? But now, this is the entire business. The gift basket business, forget about it, it's at risk. Your real estate commissions, forget about it, they're at risk. They can sue you for a bunch of money because 
this business is doing well on paper because all of the money is flowing into it. Guys, it could be more than this. That's how a rookie does it. All their money flowing in to one thing. Now, here's how some people do it. And you're, you're stepping up a level. This is you, big old smiley face. This is how some people do it. They individually own each LLC. So this could be a rental. This could be that gift basket business. I'm not going to do all of them. This could be real estate. Maybe you're in solar. Oh, you also do insurance. Guys, there's so many people that do so much stuff. Oh, and you have an Uber account. Every single thing they do is a different LLC. And the reason this is good is remember that rental topic conversation a minute ago with that lady that sued you because she fell? You're, first of all, there's a shield here. As long as you're separating those bank accounts, you've separated yourself. But second of all, there's a shield here. You're not trapped because that rental has nothing to do with that gift basket business. They're not connected in any way, shape, or form. That rental has nothing to do with real estate commissions, nothing to do with solar, nothing to do with insurance, nothing to do with Uber. You effectively are only at risk for this one LLC. You see the difference? Now, for the golden ticket, thousands of dollars in value right here. Here's how I do it. I started a holding company. Literally, the holding company is a fancy word for a company that owns companies. That's all it is. So, my holding company owns LLCs. How many LLCs do I own? One. How many LLCs do the holding company own? It's more than this, but multiple. Notice now, for the first time, do we have one or two shields? Two. Because in this case, I could have a rental. I could have a consulting business. Oops. I could have a solar commissions. And I could do Uber. These are random names for things or investments or whatever. Now, when that lawsuit we've been talking about several times happens over here, that lady falls. Guess what? Oh my gosh, and she is mad. She is mad. I got to figure out if I can sue the guy that owns it. Remember, last time I showed you that the LLC, it encapsulates, but that doesn't stop her from trying to sue you too. She can sue anybody she wants. Doesn't mean she's going to win, but it costs you what? money. I got to figure out who owns, who owns this LLC. Let me go. And she goes to the website. If you go to Arizona and she has the name of your LLC, first of all, it's public record who owns a house. So then it's going to say ABC LLC owns the house. Then she's going to go on the Arizona website. Let's say if you're from Arizona, it's public information. She's going to go ABC LLC. And she's going to say, if you don't have this, it's going to be you. She's going to say, oh, Patrick owns the house. Now she's going to sue me. In this case, she's going to see Holding company owns the house. And then she's going to go look up the holding company. She's not going to find it. It's in Delaware and she can't look it up. They don't have that feature. It's private. Now she's going to have to go hire an attorney, which is going to cost her thousands and thousands of dollars to even search who owns it if they find it. Welcome to the world of protection. So what you've just done is you've added a shield here. And now there's a shield here because you've separated yourself twice. There is no logical reason why you had anything to do with that because it, your holding company owned it. Maybe they can get to the holding. Very low likelihood. You, whole nother ball game. Now, I'll give you guys a bonus. I don't do this yet. I've got friends that make far more money than I make. This is my level that I'm currently at. You've seen the stages. I used to be just one. Then it was me owning multiple, and then I had a good lesson and a good consultation, and I learned how to do this. But I'm going to give you guys one more key tip here. Some people add one more bubble in here. This is either A, a trust that owns the holding, that owns the LLCs, or B, it's another holding. I've seen that too. Literally, they do a Delaware holding who owns a Delaware holding who then owns all the LLCs. This might sound like Fugazi craziness right now, guys, and you might not even be to the point where you can take advantage of this information. But the point is, you can never be too sure about yourself. You can never be too protected. And utilize this video, look back at it, go to your meetings and say, look at this, look what he's talking about. 
Do what you guys need to do, but I hope this brings you guys some value in protecting yourself from a liability perspective. Again, you might be asking one question, is there any tax implication? No. This doesn't save me any money in taxes at all. Um, and secondly, it actually costs me more money because now every year I have to re-up to have all these businesses. Every year just to maintain businesses costs hundreds of dollars in each LLC that you own. And so keep that in mind. There's an expense associated with it. And then now I have books for this. I have books for this. I have books for this. I spend $750 a month just on bookkeeping and tax prep. So every year I'm out the gate 10 grand approximately for just accounting. And we haven't even started talking about these dues. Here's another thousand bucks right here. There's 11 grand just to keep the thing operating. We haven't even made money. So you got to keep that in mind. As you grow, do this, build this slowly. You don't have to do it all at the same time. We've done five videos. I hope you guys are feeling good about this. And last but not least guys, I want you guys to connect with me. If you've never been around me, you don't know who I am. Find me on Instagram at pkennyfx. That is my Instagram. Actually at the top, if you go on, on social media, on, on mobile, at the top, it'll say PK out loud. That is a access to a chat where you can get to know me and, and I constantly send updates of what I'm thinking about the markets, finance, uh, finances, economics, even updates on new videos. And, and when we talk about more master classes, I'll have it available in there. So go connect with me guys. I hope that these br uh, videos brought you a ton of value. Click the like button if they did. Let me know in the comments section what you learned. We'll see you on the next video.